In today's video, we're going to check out the brand new MetaQuest 3S. This is the more affordable version of the MetaQuest 3 that came out not that long ago and a great update from somebody coming in from the first generation or even the second generation Quest 2. Uh, we have a lot of improvements in the horsepower, the cameras that we have in here, but also the ability of having more RAM so everything runs smoother. So without further ado, this is TK and this is the MetaQuest 3S. Faster, better and more affordable. Like and subscribe to make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos for you on the channel. Now, first and foremost, obviously, thank you very much for Meta to send me this package. It includes the actual MetaQuest 3S. This is the actual brand new one. We also have a carrying case. Uh, now, surprisingly, the accessories that they sent me actually both work for the 3 and the 3S. Since again, it's intended to be for the newer generation of controllers and functional options that we have in there. But without further ado, again, this is the MetaQuest 3S. Really nice bonus for anybody that does pick it up. It does actually come with a copy of uh, Batman Arkham Shadow. Unfortunately, it's not currently available yet. It will be released on the 22nd of October, 2024. So as soon as that video is, well, as soon as the game is available, I'll definitely try to put out a video for you guys referencing my experience with it. But it's definitely nice that if you're picking this up, even in the slowest configuration, you're still going to be able to get that free game included, as it's always nice. Uh, again, in the past, they used to include different things, and I'm happy to see that they're continuing. First thing you'll notice, obviously, from the design standpoint, is this is slightly different than what it looks like with the MetaQuest 3. Again, it's closer to the, th the 2 design standpoint. And again, a combination between the 2 and the 3, you kind of get the 3S. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, one of the nicest things that they did here is they also included a hard shell case. This is the Meta one, again, the MetaQuest one, compact carrying case. This is intended for both either the 3 or the 3S. And it'll carry basically the essentials, your charging cable, your charger, the two controllers, as well as, of course, is the main headset itself. And it's a hard shell case providing us protection, but also compact size that you can travel with very nicely. And it has a nice little, uh, you know, basically a zipper on the side that provides us the carrier. We'll definitely check that out in a little bit. The last thing they included as well as part of the accessory pack that they sent me is these are actually uh, a charger. It's a wireless charger for the controllers that also includes the wireless batteries that we need to use to be able to charge them wirelessly. Uh, it also has a pass-through connection, the ability of actually allowing it to charge directly our MetaQuest. So you use the same charger that comes with the MetaQuest 3S and you connect that cable directly into the wireless charger for the controllers, replace the batteries, and then run the additional cable coming straight, straight through here. As I'm showing you guys with that quick image of video that I recorded there, and it makes it very nice and very simple. You get all of the controllers as well as the headset charging at the same time, and they'll all be ready for you whenever you're ready to go. Now, the case we talked about, of course, also includes the Meta logo on it. Let's go ahead and open it up. There is a loop option here so that you will basically open it up very easily. And of course, when you open it now, just one thing, obviously the Quest does not come inside of the case. I actually loaded it up in here just for us to be able to check it out. And I'm actually using this case to carry the controllers as well as the headset. I don't have the charging cable here yet as I have that actually connected directly into that wireless charger that I showed you guys just a second ago. We have the two additional cables, the connector there. And of course, I'm using the original Meta charger that comes in the box with the Quest 3S. Let's go ahead and take out the headset, the controllers, very much the same. And um, when you first buy them, actually, they do include a double A batteries in them. So you don't necessarily need to have uh, the wireless charging, but it is something that you can use. Uh, there's obviously left and right configuration for the controllers and a nice little kind of a pop-up option. You can put the cable, the charging stuff, everything will be in there and then it closes on it very nicely. Again, the wire, the case itself is nice. It's compact. It doesn't add too much bulk and it should be able to fit in anybody's backpack. As far as what comes to the actual box directly in the MetaQuest 3S, uh, basically the headset itself, it has its own strap, pretty much the exact same design that we saw with the three. Very easy, very nice to configure. And of course you can actually replace it. So it actually pops in here. You're able to put in different configurations by additional straps, but they do include one obviously in the package and it's very nice. Nice configuration to uh, tighten it on the top as well as on the sides a little bit here through the expansion in the center so you can make it tighter and make it have it basically a good fit. We have a control button, a volume rocker position on the bottom, one of the cameras on the side, another camera on the side, and of course some of the microphones that we have. And if we turn it slightly on the top, you'll notice that one of the main things that we'll, uh, we won't have anymore is that headphone jack that we had with the Quest 2 and Quest 3. So the 3 has a headphone jack still positioned on the right side, the 3S does not. On the top, no buttons on uh, at all. We have a wake up and sleep button, a USB USB-C charging port and of course also audio routing port in case you want to be able to use external audio like let's say a wired USB-C cable. Since we no longer have a headphone jack that's pretty much going to be the only way to get audio out here. Either wired uh, audio through a headset or if you're using something like I've used in before Soundcore it makes some really get, uh, good ones. It definitely looks nice and we have an LED light for when we're charging when it's fully charged. The actual piece itself or the head mount uh, configuration here is pretty straightforward what we've seen in the past. 
you're able to remove it and of course you can adjust the actual lenses the lenses here are slightly different than what we had on the MetaQuest uh, 3 because these are actually considered to be closer to what we had on the MetaQuest 2. Fresnel lenses and these are basically configurable by just adjusting them to make sure that they give you the right configuration. The one thing they do include here is sunglasses or basically glass spacers here in case you notice that when you're putting it on your glasses are touching the lens element you can actually put this on and provide a little bit of extra spacer for the included piece so therefore you have a little bit of space and you'll be able to use your prescription lenses uh, sorry your prescription glasses without any problem otherwise you can just basically mount this up and again it is basically just clicks exactly where it needs to be and make sure you have it connected on all of four sections top and bottom and then you're ready to go it does include a USB-C to C cable. This is a three foot cable with the USB-C charger to US style cable. In the box itself, it does not come with uh, the wireless charging battery. It actually comes with just a standard battery. This is the module uh, that you're able to get with that accessory pack where this becomes a wireless charging. So you can actually use it. There's a release button that's present right at the top. So if you put this on, go ahead and close it. You notice it looks pretty good. To release it, just push that little button, it opens up. And then pretty simple no pushing no pushing down no no kind of fidgeting with it and of course we have uh, the lanyards to be able to make sure that they don't fall off whenever we're playing some of those intense games with the nice little stopper i find this very helpful especially when i'm playing beat saber because a lot of times when you're moving your hands so fast i've had it happen a couple of times with i think my original quest where i've actually thrown the controller because i was so excited now when we put them next to each other the meta quest 3 on the left and the meta quest 3s on the right you'll notice that there are some similarities but also some differences the clusters of cameras are positioned in slightly different areas. And one of the other things that the cameras on the left here have is that we have a hardware proximity sensor that we don't have on the MetaQuest 3S. We now have RGB cameras allowing for full color uh, pass through as opposed to the black and white that we saw with the first and second generations of Quest. As I mentioned, you guys also, we did lose the headphone jack. So we used to have a headphone jack and USB-C audio on the, the two, but on this one, we only have USB-C audio. So we didn't lose the audio jack. It just, it basically became incorporated into the USB-C where on the three, you have a headphone jack as well as a USB-C port so be able to actually configure it and of course cameras on the bottom volume rocker and turn on button on the bottom here so we have a slightly different this is a wake up button as well so we have here but the other thing that we have here as far as the configuration when we're starting to look at them is the biggest improvement is that they both run the same Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 processor. So the biggest difference, of course, is this is the latest Qualcomm uh, mobile processor for VR headsets, and it looks absolutely fantastic, both supporting 8 gigs of RAM. That's an upgrade from the, uh, the Quest 2 from 6. And this is where the difference also changes. 1080p resolution here on the right with the MetaQuest 3S, as opposed to the 4K capability that we have on the uh, MetaQuest 3. Again, basically what they're doing here is they're giving you the justification of saying, look, you want an entry level experience. You've never had a headset. You've had maybe the first generation of MetaQuest and you want to be able to upgrade, this is a great upgrade without having to break the bank. Not to say that this is a very expensive option, but the experience that you're getting here is definitely a lot more premium and you can feel it whenever you're playing there. So you can either go in with the entry level now, which is the 3S or the premium experience, which is the standard three. And of course, one of the other things I really like about this is that a lot of the accessories that work on the three will work on the 3S. So an example would be here last year when I bought this with the MetaQuest 3, I bought this extra strap from Meta that provided us a better configuration on the back and a stronger uh, area Area here and of course a clicking experience to be able to get the right fit this I can pretty much take it off of here put it straight on the MetaQuest 3s and it'll work perfectly when comparing it to the MetaQuest 2 the Quest 2 3s has about 20% slimmer body style than what we had with the 2 as opposed to the 30% so you'll notice actually that the, uh, the MetaQuest 3 is slightly even thinner than what we have here at about 10% uh, as I mentioned to you guys, as far as weight, uh, this basically they're about the same, 514 to 515. But the biggest thing is that they're both basically a little bit heavier than what we had with MetaQuest 2. But that does come at an extra capacity of battery. Where we have here is a 4,324 milliampere, giving us about two and a half hours worth of gameplay on the 3S, and about 5,060 milliampere battery here at about 2.2 hours. Difference in experience is obviously is here we have higher, uh, basically hardware quality with the with the displays that draws more power, giving you less battery experience. Although it is a much bigger battery, it will give you less battery experience based on the hardware requirements. So here you're getting that sweet spot. You get a bigger battery than what we had, which was 3,640 to about 4,324, and then you're getting a 
longer battery experience from two and a half, basically two, two and a half, a little bit over two and a half hours, depending on what you're using. Now, the nice thing about this is that you're also still able to use the MetaQuest or basically the Meta Horizon application directly on your device. You can install it on your Android or iOS device. I'm using it on my Pixel Pro 9 Fold. And of course, you can link it up, set it up, and of course, go through the setup process, which is very nice and very intuitive. It actually has a proximity configuration that once you turn on the app and this is going through the setup process, your device should be able to pick it up. Uh, you're able to jump into your profile, customize the different experiences. You can also go in, access uh, like you saved games. If you do any screen sharing, uh, the device is actually off right now. That's one of the reasons why it doesn't actually recognize it. So once I turn it on, you'll notice there's an LED that turns on there, the wake up button here, the LED there. And once you have that on, you'll be able to access the, uh, obviously, you know, the gallery, the devices that you have in there. And just for reference, you know, I've actually been using the Quest since the original version. The Quest, the Quest 2, uh, sorry, the Quest 3 and the 3S. And one of the biggest things that actually I was at Qualcomm's Tech Summit when they first announced the processor for the first generation Quest and I picked it up on the way back, to, uh, on the, basically traveling back home. Um, again, move different experiences you can do here and you can also search in defending, uh, you can find new applications, discover different things. And what I really like it about also is you have the ability of casting directly from the unit itself to your device. And of course, not only be able to see what you're seeing through the app, but also set up or initiate recording. You can see the battery level here. The battery is definitely being used here. The controllers are definitely a little bit higher as they're supposed to last you a few cycles. And of course, app, uh, app library, you can basically headset settings and of course, my warranty. And of course, you could check, hit the cast and it'll connect and you'll see exactly whatever you're seeing through the actual MetaQuest 3S on the actual device on your display. And you can initiate any kind of recording that you'd like. One thing to, to mention though is DRM or copyrighted content, let's say videos or anything that you're watching, will show up as blank screens or you won't be able to see them in the recording. So it will only record uh, general information and things that you're using without necessarily impacting any kind of copyright issues. Now, lucky for me when I'm using this, I didn't actually have to use the additional spacer that they included in the box. So for the most part, my glasses are very much flat. So all I have to do is basically take the, put the headset on, put it on on there. I had a whole bunch of windows open. So one thing to mention is, okay, first and foremost is I'm actually looking at you guys or I'm looking at the camera itself directly through the pass-through cameras that we have, which now support full colors, uh, basically pass-through as opposed to the Quest 2 that only had uh, basically the same experience as the first generation, which was basically a black and white experience. It wasn't, it was a lot higher quality than the first one, but it still gave you pretty much just basically a, a monochrome experience. Now we have full color. I also have the ability of tracing that basically is tracking for my hands on both. So if I'm actually pressing the button here, it recenters the bar for me in the experience. And on the left side, if I just hit the menu, this is obviously if I'm inside of a menu that has it, it'll open up the menu for me. We're able to use the controllers. Let's go ahead and bring them on. Again, I like the fact that we have the two little straps. And this is how you know that this works really good. I'm actually able to see exactly where things are and I know where they are. I'm not actually having to fumble where things are. I've also been able to say realistically that I've been able to respond to text messages using these. Uh, the quality is, I'll say this, the displays are not as high quality as the three. So that's going to be your first given, but it's a lot better than what we had before. So in good lighting, you shouldn't have any problems to be able to tell and see where things are. The refresh rate is actually reasonable enough that I'm actually able to see. I will say that maybe a little bit slower than what we see with the Quest 3, but it's still really nice. And I feel like for somebody coming into VR, this is gonna be absolutely fantastic. So gaming on this, and again, as I mentioned to you guys here, so I'm grabbing my phone, I'm actually able to use it, do everything I wanna do with it. And what I've done in the past is when, I've, when I'll start showing you guys some of those experiences or the recordings, that's how I did it. I put it on and I'm using the pass-through camera to be able to start the recording and casting directly on this. And as long as you have a good enough or fast enough internet connection, you shouldn't have any problems be able to cast and play games at the same time. The wireless uh, configuration that we have in here has definitely improved over the last generation. 8 gigs of RAM are definitely noticeable. I haven't had a single stutter in the sense of uh, the game stuttering or locking up on me. And I noticed that it runs, I would say almost as smoothly as the three, but again, it depends on the game and the Wi-Fi connectivity and the latency that you have. Volume rocker, again, position on the bottom here. Uh, the button that we have here at the bottom next to it is the initiation of the, uh, basically to configure your area where you are. And the button on the top right here, I'm sorry, eh, right there, on the left here, not the right, uh, that basically turns it on and turns it off. So if I push the button, it shuts it down, pretty much the, the experience as you experience it. Push it on again, it turns on, you'll notice that the LED turns on and it comes back within about two seconds. So how has it been 
playing games on this. If you've watched the channel from before, you probably know that Beat Saber is one of my favorite games. Now, obviously, uh, there's a lot of other games that I love playing on this here. There's a lot of new experiences that came about. And because a lot of the games were updated to run on the Quest 3, the 3S just takes the benefit of that. There's not really much for developers to do to change or incorporate or adapt to the Quest 3S because it runs the same processor. It has the same RAM. So in, in essence, essentially, you're running the same horsepower on this. What's different, obviously, is the delivery method. You have higher resolution displays and, of course, different experiences slightly where the headphone jack on the 3, where the 3S does not have that. But Beat Saber runs absolutely fantastic. There's actually even some new songs that were added that was a surprise to me. And, of course, new albums you're able to pick up. And playing it is absolutely very full body experience for me. And that's what I like about the ability of testing out the, the uh, basically the tracking on the on the two controllers and make sure that they run the, the way they're supposed to. Because if you notice it, especially if you've played it with some of the older generations, as time went on, especially with the first quest, the tracking started to fall apart because as time went on with the improvements and everything that we got, it's just the older hardware wasn't able to keep up. So Quest 3, absolutely. Quest 3S, absolutely no problem with Beat Saber. Um, again, Arkham, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, Batman game will be coming out very soon. And hopefully when that comes out, I'll be able to experience it. Um, I played the Star Wars game that I played with the Quest 3. Absolutely fantastic. Really nice game. I got a chance to play also some uh, gaming experience and going into the metaverse as, as they have it. So there's a lot of good things that you're able to do there. And what I like about it is some of the improvements that they put in um, recently, actually, with spatial uh, placement of windows and panels, have all been incorporated here and they run beautifully. What runs even better for me, which actually is very nice, is the ability of linking it via Wi-Fi to my desktop PC and mirroring both of my displays. So we're talking about basically an ultra wide and a basically a standard wide uh, display here on both the 32 and the 49. And I was able to mirror them exactly the way I have, exactly I'm showing you guys with that demo. And they look really nice. The, the quality is really good. The tracking, uh, the resolution, again, the wireless configuration on this is crazy good. If you do end up having any concerns with the connection to your PC, obviously the wired configuration will always run you best, but make sure to buy a compatible cable that provides you that experience. Uh, those are things that you'll want to keep in mind when you're using it. But for me, using my desktop experience in the headset wirelessly while I'm sitting on my desk was crazy because it looked absolutely fantastic. The colors were really nice. The only time you ever really even realize that you're not using a 4K display as opposed to the cameras in here is when you do in the pass-through. The pass-through experience is a little bit higher quality on the 3 as opposed to the 3S. But gameplay, really nice, very good colors, very good representations. The speakers that I was talking to you guys and I didn't get a chance to mention to you guys, they actually have built-in speakers that are very nice. And they're positioned on the edge of the actual head, uh, the, the head strap uh, clamp here. And what it does essentially is it pushes the audio straight to you. The one thing to mention though is obviously is that you're listening it you're listening to the music and everything else or basically the game experience as everybody else in the area. So a wired configuration is going to be the only option. And at this point, USB-C is going to be the only way. So if you have a, a pair of USB-C audio uh, earbuds as far as basically wired, put them in. You do have Bluetooth support in here, so you're able to use a Bluetooth headset. To kind of summarize in the general experience of what you're getting here, this is a VR AR experience. And what I mean by this is it allows you to actually use the headset in sense of just using it and be aware of your environment. So if you set up the boundary where you are and you somehow accidentally step out of it, it steps you out of the experience knowing that you're no longer in that boundary. And if you're getting close to the boundary, it tells you where things are. So I like the responsiveness there. Uh, battery life for me has been consistent about two and a half hours to uh, basically two to two and a half hours. I'll say that depending on the audio level that you're playing and depending on the quality of the signal that it's getting, that's going to change here and there. But again, expect somewhere between two to two and a half hours with the upgraded battery, the brand new processor, the additional RAM, uh, the overall, again, the better cameras with the color, the full pass through color experience is absolutely great. Works great with your PC, works great on its own. If you want to be able to just relax in the car, there is support for airplane mode. Turn that on so it disables the uh, the location spacing that it's trying to track and you're able to use it more of a basically a pass-through headset, so on the plane or in the car. Uh, but Or if you just want to sit on the couch and watch a, a nice Netflix movie, you can jump into a fully immersive studio-like experience or even run, let's say, you know, Prime Video, Prime Music is supported now in there as well. Or even just run, uh, let's say, Xbox Cloud uh, type of an experience or even Steam Link to run some PC games strictly from your device on your PC 
onto the device while you're sitting in the living room. And I really like the fact that at the starting price point, this still includes the brand new Batman game. Again, by the time you guys pick it up, if you decide to pick one up for yourself, hopefully this is already available. You just turn it on, go directly into the App Store itself, find the app, install it right away. It recognizes that you have the device and it'll be able to install and you'll be able to start enjoying it in no time. So I want to say thank you very much to Meta for sending me the 3S, the controllers as well, of course, with the charging dock as well as the case. And I hope that you guys found something helpful in here. In case if you've ever thought about picking up and you thought the MetaQuest 3 was too expensive, the 3S solves that problem. Well, not only that, it gives you even more experiences at a much more affordable. Again, the better, faster, more affordable experience is here with the MetaQuest 3S. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual. Bye-bye for now.